Do you want to know my number one tip for recovery? For the last 15 years, I've been working with people with conditions which are famous for being difficult to recover from. And yet, people do. But how? How? That's the question. I believe that knowledge drives recovery. And neuroscience has given us some really interesting insights into the nature of a lot of these conditions and really challenged what we used to think was going on. So based on that, my number one tip for recovery, or a neuro nugget, as I like to call them, is to stop labeling things as either physical or psychological. That old way of classifying conditions really isn't supported anymore by the science and it just gets in the way of potentially finding really useful treatment options. So anxiety is no longer seen as a thinking problem. PTSD is not a crazy person. Pain is not a broken bit and fatigue is not a running out of batteries. But when we stick this to this historic way of classifying conditions, we miss real treatment options. So if you are stuck in your health, you might just be limiting options by the way that you are seeing your condition. And these are conditions that people are recovering from, so why limit your options? So just to explore it more, how you see your condition will influence how you try to solve it. So if you see your issue as a physical issue, you might try exercise or rest or dietary changes, medication, maybe physiotherapy very body-based interventions. Or if you see your issue as psychological, you might try cognitive behavioral therapy, ACT, counseling or mindfulness, you know, very thinking-based therapies. But what we're finding is that the treatments that are focused on the body are having great results with conditions that we used to label as psychological. And treatments that are based on psychotherapy are also having really interesting success rates with things that we used to label as physical. So by dropping the label of things being physical or psychological, you might instantly open up some treatment options that you may never have considered before. So neuroscience is now giving us some really interesting insights into what's going on in the brain. And what it highlights is that this historic division between physical and psychological really doesn't make a lot of sense. It's an artificial boundary. So take, for example, pain. Last year, the world body that studies pain, the International Association of the Study of Pain, released a new definition of pain. And it was that pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. Sensory and emotional. So by understanding the true nature of certain conditions, we can open up potential treatment options. So here's another example for you, a challenge if you like. Think of a cold. Is this physical or psychological? Now, traditionally, we can see the snot, you might have a fever, so we will put this into the physical category. Yet, we know that how someone thinks can influence their immune function. So studies will show that an optimist, for example, when given a rhinovirus, will get fewer symptoms than a pessimist. So is this cold physical or is it psychological? Or is it that the boundary between the two don't really make a lot of sense anymore? We also know that lack of sleep is a major contributor to altered immune function. So what if someone's lying there in bed at night, worried, stressed, thinking about losing a job or a marriage, and by lying there awake at night, losing sleep, they are altering their immune function and increasing their risk of infection. Now, is this cold physical or is it psychological? Or is labeling it one or the other getting in the way of seeing potential options? Equally, if someone is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, we can't see anything. So traditionally we would label this as psychological. Yet science is now appreciating that this is a systemic issue that is including changes in the nervous system and the brain. So is this condition physical or is it psychological? Or again, is it that labeling system that needs to fall away? We also know that childhood trauma increases, amongst other things, someone's risk of diabetes or heart disease. 
So again, are these things physical or are they psychological? Or is it that labeling system that might stop us from seeing options? And if you think anxiety is all in the head, well, quite frankly, you've never had a panic attack. And so my number one tip for recovery, my neuro nugget is stop labeling things as either physical or psychological. It is an old narrative, it is meaningless, and it gets in the way of potentially opening up successful treatment options. So by setting aside this division between what is physical and what is psychological, neuroscience now gives us some really interesting insights into the role that the brain plays in a lot of these conditions. Not psychology, but neurology. So for example, we have a better understanding of why something like yoga can be wonderful for anxiety because moving our body changes the way our brain operates. We also have a better understanding of why addressing stress can be wonderful for osteoarthritis knee pain because stress hormones change the way our brain perceives the world around us and the world inside of us. We also have a better understanding why interventions based on say eye patterns like EMDR can be very effective for post-traumatic stress disorder. So that's, that's using our eyes to access our brain to change post-traumatic stress disorder into post-traumatic flourishing. So things aren't as we once thought. And by dropping that label between what is physical and what's psychological and approaching these from a neurological or a brain-based perspective, we open up options. And that's the arena that I work in with the lightning process, a brain-based training, looking at how we can influence our health by working with our mind and our body. So regardless of your diagnosis, it might be worth just checking out how strongly you're holding on to the view that your thing is physical or your thing is psychological. And by dropping those labels, you might just open up some interesting treatment options that you've never considered before. So I hope that helps. Stay tuned for more neuro nuggets. I think my next one will be about the biggest misconception people have about the brain. And as a bit of a teaser, if you were to sum it up, what do you think the brain's main job is? So stay tuned if you want to know more about my work, hear more neuro nuggets, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. See you later.